Welcome to Being the Genuine Athlete podcast, where we inspire those who aim for excellence in life and want to understand the how and what it takes to be a champion in life. My name is Jura Koschak. My purpose, dedication and commitment is to activate your potential, that you understand the ego through your sport and life situations. So I share and give you the tools to be just this, the genuine athlete. Are you ready to tune in? So hello, Sheriff Suma from Sierra Leone, living now in USA. Where are you staying? I'm staying in Atlanta. Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. Yes, Atlanta, no. yeah, Georgia. Yes. Thank you very much for joining uh, my, our podcast, Being the Genuine Athlete, where we will go deeper into your stories that you've had. We talked a couple of days ago and I was amazed, all of your stories, um, and I was excited because you said, I don't talk much, Jure. I'm a quiet person, but you were talking all the time. So I wanted to invite you and here we are that you will explain a bit about your story, about yourself and how you see and perceive the genuine athlete. So first, let me introduce you, former national team captain for the Sierra Leone and you played professional soccer, you still play in uh, Sweden, Norway, Turkey, Cyprus, Azerbaijan, and now in the United States. And you played the under-17 World Cup in Finland, under-23, and debuted with the national team in 2006. Can you please add what you've played, which competitions you've uh, played with your national team, Sierra Leone? Well, um, I've been part of the national team for a long time, and I played, we played the qualification for the Nations Cup and um, the World Cup qualifications. We didn't make it. I, did, I didn't, we didn't make it. We didn't make it and we lost some points, important points at homes. So that was a bad, bad start for us. But I know we still have the, the players that can do it to qualify in the future. Good, but you're still playing for the national team? No, 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 I stopped, I stopped. Okay, so you're now only residing in USA with your family, right? Yes, yes, with my family, yeah. And which league are you playing in there? I'm playing the, um, the there was a, there's a NISA league that just started um, two years ago. And before that, I was playing the, um, the NPSL league uh, three years ago. And then we were champion, won the champion and won the league last three years ago and then two years ago and then they stopped because of the COVID this year. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you are planning to stay in uh, living in the United States? Yeah, for now. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know what the future holds because I'm pl- I have lots of plans in my head, but I'm planning to stay here for now. Yeah. Because my family lives here. So this is going to be my home. You have children, right? Three of them. Yes. Three of them. Yeah. Two, two boys or? Two girls, two girls actually. Two, two girls. girls, one boy. One boy. Yeah, two girls. Okay, they're yeah. playing football. No, the no, 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 not not yet, not yet. Okay, yeah, they're still young. Okay. <laughs> my, loves, my son loves soccer, so we'll see. Okay, good, good. I'm just gonna go right into a very specific thing. Uh, I finished a session with a client, with an athlete, football player as well, soccer. So uh, right. football, soccer. We will we will stick to the football right. term. Yes. Let's do the football, yeah. Football. Yes. So I finished this session and the very good explanation uh, came down in a way that he asked how to be good under pressure. And I explained to him that being under pressure and performing, excelling under pressure, it means like when you're driving a car 100 miles per hour, or that's like 160 kilometers per hour, what do you do? You don't think about your aunt, about your girlfriend, about food. You are zoomed in. You are focused. So good players like you are, can you confirm this now? The question is, playing good and very good, excellent under pressure, like you've managed to play a lot of games, it requires to focus and to zoom in and put away all of the distractions. Is that so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because actually when I play when I practice and 
when I practice and play a game, it's, it's two different things. I can practice and joke around, you know, laugh, you know, have these these good feelings like it's gonna be a good weekend. I have all these feelings, but the moment I enter the field of playing, I everything become dark. Every, I become blind. No, I don't see anything. I only see what I'm gonna do. I only see the 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 the, the, the world the world ahead of me. I don't see nothing else. I don't see no family, I don't see no problems, no, nothing. All I see is soccer. I'm gonna have a good time, have fun. It's two hours, that's it. I'm gonna have that good time with myself. Very good answer. Can you please expand this answer with, um, because a lot of players, they are training and they are very serious on the training. But they can, you cannot compare a match and a training. You train, but match, like you mentioned now, is a completely different world. And you need to understand, you have to have that experience of a lot of matches to understand the pressure that it brings and how to really, like you said, put everything away and just play the game. Yeah, 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 it's hard. So players take practice really serious, you know. And then when it's game time, it's they, they, they do the opposite things. You know, the, the way you practice, most of the time, that's where you play. Mm -hmm. I practice really good because I know this week, the, the weekend, I don't want to do some things that I, don't, I, that I cannot do. So <clears throat> I put all my attention and everything that I do in practice that whatever the coach tells me to do, I said, okay, all right, I know what to do. And then when I go home, I, I will refresh it again in my mind to prepare myself for that weekend, you know, for the game. So when the game time comes, I don't have to be thinking, what should I do? I already know what I'm doing. I'm just going there. You know, that's why I like my, that's why I like music. I don't want to listen to nobody. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to listen to nothing. Don't, don't call me. Don't, I don't even touch my phone when I'm playing. No phones, no nothing. I don't want to hear anything. Go to the field, see the fans, and then my head is, my head is down in the field. I only focus what I'm going to do. And then I do my extra, I do extra things, but the things that I know I can do better. That makes everything simple and easy for me when I play. It makes everything easy, you know? I love it. It makes me like I'm dancing in the field, like I'm going to the club, I'm dancing in Instagram. I'm enjoying, that's my best, I'm enjoying it. Cool, enjoying. Very good that you mentioned it. Uh, we will stick a bit uh, with the focus under pressure and then we'll go to enjoying. Because there are some uh, differences between players, of course. Some players may need this, some others. But there's this basic general thing to really be focused uh, that you've touched now. And, and I love it uh, how you can explain uh, this thing about uh, staying in the true line, what needs to be done. Because in the match, you don't need to be doing everything else that you do on the training. You need to do what you need to do in that exact moment Maybe uh, that moment. Yes. yes. Competing to some teams, you don't need to play everything. You need to play what you need to play against that team. All you have to do is uh, you take every game at this comes. Don't take don't don't think about Barcelona next next weekend. Think about the Chelsea that you're gonna play this week. So every week you have different opponents. You have different challenges to face. You know. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna play this week against this team, I only focus on this team. Even the coaches will not tell you about when we play next week. They never tell you about next week. They're going to tell you about this week. Yeah. This is what we have to do this week. So be disciplined, respect, and then you're going to um, overcome everything. If you, be, if you are disciplined and have respect for your teammates, you have to encourage them. You know, If somebody is down, if somebody is, if someone is not on his level, you have to like push them and say, come on, man, this is, this is what we will come here to do. You know, yeah. Everything in football happens like in the blink of an eye, in every second, any second, things can happen in football. You never give up. You never give up, even to the last minute. That's why you see, that's why it's called football. It's the fun of the game. You're losing 1 0, 80 minutes, the coach sit down, don't have nothing to do. So, the one player can do can change the whole game. Like, in one second, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. We win. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for mentioning the simple things because a lot of young players now, they think that they need to do something very extraordinary, special. And I don't know what not. They, they, ima they uh, invent things. But as you mentioned, maybe it's good that you just put away your cell phone. 
before a match. Yes. Small thing. Very much. Can you do yeah, some of the, Can you do some? Uh, can you explain some of uh, maybe two, three, five things? A list of the simple things. What not to do? For instance, uh, don't touch your phone. Or what to do? Be without your phone unless it's music. Maybe an airplane mode, uh, and really focus. Uh, some of that. Please. You know, when I, when I used to play in, um, when I used to play back in Sweden, back in the world, when I was young, I like to listen to music and then put my phones and everything. So one day the coach called me and said, "Come." He said, "The moment you start checking what's going on, what's 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 the news, what's this and that, that you're losing focus." Big, big distraction in anything that you're doing. It's like a drug. So don't start taking it because in the future you want, you want it more. So I didn't realize that until I started playing in, in Azerbaijan. Yeah. In, in Azerbaijan, they will take your phone the night before the game. They take off your phones. Everyone will take it off. They give you after the game. So you don't have phones to have to listen, to make calls to your family or mm. have to your talk to them, nothing. And the t- your your t- your, tel- your TV too, your TV watching TVs late at night, you know, to be, it's off, put it off. Your mind before the game should be early in the game. You know, you relax, you rest a lot. You know, wake up early in the morning. You know, take a walk. You know, stretch so your body is you're ready for the game. Not when you enter the field, you say I'm gonna start playing now. You start the game. The moment you wake up, that's when the game started. Yes. Anything happen? Anything happen with you in, in, in that before the game? So maybe you will be sleeping, and then some, somebody call you, or oh, your your daughter is sick, or your mom is is in the hospital. So your game is uh, is, is gone. Everything is gone. So you don't want those bad news to infect uh, affect your games. Yes, you would only do. Yeah, use of focus in the game. Listen your time. What the coach says when what when to meet for meeting and have food. Do those things, and then trust me after the game. You get it. Yes. And the thing is, with focus and being under pressure, a lot of players think that they cannot handle or that it's too much sometimes. But it's really like riding a bike for the first time. It's really like riding a car 120 kilometers per hour. Everybody can focus. When we are in a situation, you can zoom in and you have that focus. So it's it is a special thing, but it's not so special. You just really need to focus. Just focus, just focus. Because everybody have it inside you. You have it in yeah. you. So nobody nobody will tell you to teach you to be focused. The coach will tell you to focus. It will tell you, you have to focus on these things. But if you don't get it inside of you, you don't let it out, you you not you not you not succeed. You you will not succeed in in uh, in the team. And you let you have to let it out, you know, take everything outside of inside of you, take it outside. You are there because they believe you. You are you are in that field because people rely on you. That's why you are there. We believe in you, that's why I'll put you there. So take all this belief that we have in you, let it out, you know. Take out your lion in you, you know, don't keep it inside. Very good. Because you mentioned this now, I didn't mean to say about anything about this, but I'm going to read it. The way of perceiving this. It gives us a completely different thing. In order to be born, you need two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 second-great-grandparents, and so on. Uh, And then it goes to ninth great-grandparents. It's more than 2,000 people for in order to be born. So it says, for you to be born today from 12 previous generations, you needed a total of 4,094 ancestors over the last 400 years. Think for a moment, how many struggles, how many battles, how many difficulties, how much sadness, happiness, how many love stories, how many expressions of hope for the future did your ancestors have to undergo for you to exist in this present moment? That's a good one. Because you come, you come from Africa and um, they say, the scientists say that uh, the root of a human being is coming from Africa, in a way. Uh, we will not yeah. touch the different politics and aliens and stuff. Uh, <laughs> let's stay in this story, but uh, you come from a very big continent. Uh, how does that make you feel uh, with all these roots and what do you bring? Because you were playing in Europe as a young uh, boy, actually. 
uh, how are you feeling that being present in Sweden first and so on? Yeah, when I first moved to, to, to Sweden, it was hard. It was really hard for me because I have to, you know, to, um, to get their, their, their own system, you know, to, use, to get used to their own system, you know, because mm -hmm. what I bring, I bring my, my root in, in me. You know, I bring my root to plant it in there. I think that's why I was there. I was there for a reason. So when I came there, I learned their own, their own style, their own style, their own system. And then I, I put in my own system, my own style of playing. You know, so I mingled both of them, makes it match and makes it really good. Good. And, and how did you, because you mentioned roots and bringing in the system, because that is an adaptation phase process that you come somewhere yes. and then you need to adapt and implement and connect and then you can bring yourself because you come as a football player you come from a certain a, a team or a, or or a nation or country with because you have good skills but then you need to yes. show these good skills in a completely different environment how yeah. is this when, with athletes with football players yeah, when i when i first came there you know and you know the the coach saw me he says he look at me, he says, good, say, welcome. We, we've we seen your, your videos, so come show us what you can do. I, because he said, personally, I already know what you can do, but you have to show the board that you are, you are a good player. Uh -huh. so, okay. I smile about you. I say, oh, fine, that's, that's easy. So I went to the field and... I started practice with the guys. It was it was really fast. It was really fast, you know, because I was what everybody was running you know, up and down. You know. And I as I, I stand one time looking at them. I said, I have something to, to, to make these people come down, you know. I have I have something I will do to make them come down. So the first ball like that, they gave me when I'm practicing. This guy rushed to me. The moment he rushed, I dribble him and that's it. That's everything changes. You so the coach, it. you know, yeah, for me. And then after the practice, the coach says, really good, I like it, continue. I say, okay. So every game, you know, and then one day he asks me, he says, what is your strength in, in, in football? I said, my strength? I said, I don't know. I said, what, my, what is my strength? He said, I don't know. It's you, you know your strength, so you tell me. I was like, okay, um, I think I can dribble two, three players. He said, no, no, that's not your strength. That's not, that's your skills. He says, show me your strength. I said, I don't know what is my strength. I'm stronger. He said, no, your strength in football, you are really fast. If you are fast, the ball, the ball is faster than you. The only way they can catch you is when you don't have the ball. So if you have the ball, pass it and then run. So that, that's, uh, that's how my game changes. So whenever I have the ball, I pass and then I sprint. Pass and sprint then. It was fun. Cool. Uh, I already mentioned to you the story, but I'm going to say it again uh, for the listeners of the podcast and viewers, uh, how I traveled 20 hours from Slovenia to Poland with the train. And I was yeah, still yeah. walking from the train ride over the night. And then my first international match as a 14 year old boy in, in north of the Poland and the Baltic Sea was against a, a Swedish guy from, uh, Asamoa from uh, Asamoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where are they from you said from Ghana Ghana yes but he was yeah. playing for Sweden a, a very athletic guy a black skin he was strong so I was playing first time against a black player first time on a on a, a violet or blue table tennis table and first time with the with orange ball all orange colors ball. different everything different. Uh, what was your experience with the different cultures coming from Sierra Leone, where I think it's uh, summer all the time, and then playing in Sweden when you don't have uh, sun in the winter? <laughs> well, uh, my first experience was, um, I, came, I came there, I practiced with the team. So my first game was, in friendly game was in December. December in Sweden, it's, it's, it's cold, cold. It was snowing, so all right. I dressed up, went out, jog. So I, I couldn't feel my body. I couldn't feel all my body. I couldn't feel nothing. 
<laughs> I went back inside, you know. I was looking at them, they, you know, they were ready. He said, come on, let's go. I was, I was like, okay. I asked the coach, I said, I don't feel my body. He said, it's going to be fine. Just, just go out front. So I went out there, you know, played first, first half. I scored three goals. But I couldn't feel my toes. It's like my toes are, it's, it's, I, I, don't, I don't have a fit. I don't have fit. You were frozen. Yes, yeah, so I went inside, you know. So the coach, I was thinking he's gonna take me out, you know. I'll tell, I'll tell him I was crazy. So he changed some players, and then after he said, "Suma, you're going back in." I was okay. So everybody went back in the field. I was sitting, I was sitting in the dressing room. I was waiting. And so they, so they want to start. <clears throat> they said, "Hey, why is the one player?" I said, "Oh, this boy is in there." So they came back, and the coach said, "Suma, come on, just go, man." I said, "Coach, please, can I say something?" Say yeah, yeah. What is it? I say I have two things right now. Please, can I go back to Africa next uh, tomorrow? Can you take me back? He said, what? I said I, I can't stay here. It's I can't, my toes. I can't feel my toes, my ears. My, my I can't even talk good. You know everything. I, please take me home. I want to go back. It was laughing. You know, laugh. He said, okay, okay, stay. Okay, it's okay, good. So they call, they call the doctor. They take me home. I slept with my whole uniform, I don't change nothing. I slept the whole night with my soccer shoes, shingers, slept like this the whole night. <laughs> Amazing. I couldn't, I, couldn't I couldn't feel anything. I don't feel anything, nothing. I cannot, I, when I touch on this, like I'm not touching. So I said, no, let me sleep. Okay. The next day, they didn't think about it. I said, okay, I'll get used to it. So every time, little by little, I, did, I get used to it. Good. And, and, but you stayed for how many years there in the Baltic, Scandinavian countries, Sweden, Norway? You played there for how many years? I stayed there for 17 years. Yeah, because I went there when I was 16. So, yeah, I stayed there for 17 years. But I traveled, I don't know. I traveled in different places, but I always come back home there. Uh -huh. I was there for a long time. Yeah. So, but you 17. played some, some, sometimes you played as well in Cyprus and Turkey. In Cyprus and Turkey, but I go back home. I but go it back was more hot home. there. You, you didn't no, like it? Cyprus was the best. No, Cyprus was really good. It was really good, you know. I love it there. I love it. It was hot. It's my weather. It makes me play good football. And the food was nice, so it was good. Cool. Um, please uh, tell me uh, about enjoying. You mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, you need to enjoy. What are your thoughts about that? How do you enjoy under pressure? Focus and enjoy. You, focus, you, you enjoyed on training, but how do you enjoy under pressure in a match? <laughs> well, for me, I, it's, I, I, there is something natural inside me. I have a lot, I have big confidence in me. You know, it's, when I, even when I was young playing, you know, when I play with those big boys, I always, I have confidence. I know I can see a player. I will tell you, I'm going to dribble you many times. He will tell me, I will kick you. Say, no problem, but I will dribble you. So that's, that was my mind. That's my mindset. So whenever I play, I don't think about who I'm going to play against or which club or which player I'm going to play with. Or I just have, I just see the ball. As soon as I see ball, is I'm, I'm, I'm different. I, I, I just enjoy it. It's different for me, and I love it. Good. Um, it makes me because I never get mad when I play. I, I never get mad or angry. I shout at people. I, I laugh all the time. You know, they kick me, it's fine. But keep playing. Good. That's a very good mentality. Have you worked on your mentality, or were you always like that already from a kid? You, you told me that your mom was beating you up while you were playing football as a kid. Yes, yes. Because all the time when she says stay home, I know my time when to go out to play soccer. So I will stay home after 1, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., I'm gone. She will not see me until 6 p.m. She will be worried, looking for me. Why, why did you go? I said, I go play with the boys. Beat. Then she will beat me up. Don't go play. Actually, stay home. The next day, the same thing. Until she give up. So you know what? I'm tired. Go. When you go, come back. <laughs> so, so did, did your mom put you this mentality of uh, being a determined confidence yeah you know one day um, after the war we went to Guinea 
I went to Konakry and um, I was playing, you know, with, with just some other with just not different national Guineans. So one of the boys said they're gonna break my leg, you know. They said, I'm gonna kick you and break your leg. I said, okay. So I went home, you know, I told my mom, I said, somebody said in the field, they're gonna break my leg. And she said, she laughed. Was, I said, okay, why are you laughing? He's serious. He said, okay, please show me this guy who wants to break your leg. Please, you know, she's laughing. So all my cousins, they were saying, okay, please go show us this guy who wants to break your leg. And they go, have it. that was a final. So I was in the field, I was scared. I, I was really scared to play. But when I saw all of them sitting down, in the front seat, you know, not in the back, in the front. All my family was sitting down. My mom, my aunt, my cousins. Okay, I, I, I look at them. I said, because they never watched my game. But they never, my mom never watched me play. She never had that time. So she came there. I saw her. I met him, she makes me feel smart. I said, okay, good. So I showed them the guy. I said, this is the guy. So I saw my cousin. She is in the military. She came with five of her friends. All of them in the military. So I, I, I go and meet the guy. I say, you still going to kick me? He said, see those people over there? They are for you. They came to watch you kicking me. So after the game, the guy came. He said, man, you, you make my game finish. He said, you show me all this, your support. You make me scared. I don't know what to do to you. So most of the time when I play, I just think about it. You know, I say, I think about my mom is there watching. My, my people are always there watching me. Very good. Very good. This analogy uh, and imagination, how you could then also bring it forward in your career. Uh, did you also yeah. did you also do anything with uh, your faith? Uh, you believe in God or anything else? Uh, because that also brings a lot with you when you were thinking for yourself that maybe it's too big of a task, too big of a challenge, too much pressure. Then we we tend to turn ourselves to God or to some energy or Buddha. And that gives us power, like your family gave you power. Uh, how was uh, how was? Yeah, 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 yeah. I I prayed all the time. You know, I don't like talk it loud. I say inside inside of me. When I'm going there, I just pray to God, just to guide and protect me from any injuries. You know, not to get injured or something. Injury will come anyway. So, but I just pray for protection and everything, and then just pray that I have a good game. That's a good day. I just for a good day, nothing, nothing special. Just you have, just you have a good day. That's a lot. As normal, every day goes. Just a good day that day. Good, very. That's my prayer. Good. Only time when I go to you have a good day. Very good. Uh, you mentioned now uh, that God, you ask God to protect you. Uh, what happened? Uh, you told me a story last time. Can you please uh, repeat it? Uh, what happened when you got injured for the first time in your career? It was a couple of years ago. Before you wasn't, you weren't injured, but a couple of years ago it happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think when I first moved to the state, I have uh, I suppose to sign with um, the MLS team, DC, um, DC United. What brought me to the state? You know, they brought me in to play for their team. So it didn't work out. So I went to um, Kansas City in Missouri. So I, 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 I partnered with them. The coach really likes how I play. So we, we need players like you with a lot of energy, athletic, you, your split in power, you know, you can help the team. I said, good. It's okay, but now we cannot, uh, you know, we cannot sign any players until December, January. So if you have any place to, any friends or, or family around in the city, you can stay there with them. Or you can even stay here if you want to, but you're going to be bored for you. So I was thinking, okay, let me go down to my friend in Virginia, you know, stay with him for some time, practice, because he's a football player too. He's a, he's a former national team goalkeeper. I said, well, we can practice together. So I went there, we played, I played a game with him. I didn't want to play that game though. I didn't want to play. So somebody kicked me from the back. You know, I didn't get the contract. So I said to him, I said, maybe that's not God will. God doesn't want that to be, to happen, you know. I never blame God for something happened. I don't blame him. I always th th thank him for everything, you know. That was, was not my time. That's not my, my team. That's my, 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 that was not in his plan for me that time. I think the faith, as good faith, take out my NG, came back strong, and I played. I played again in the States, so it's fun. And I, 
the team that he wanted me to be. I played with them who won the, 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 the season. So it was good. Very good. So you've, re you've returned and you've made this story that was painful because your ankle was quite crushed and you needed a lot of time to recover, right? Yeah, yeah, like a year, 10 months or something, one year I didn't play. So I came back. I thought I was going to, I'm not going to play anymore. I gained some weight, you know, so I have to start back practice, you know, little by little. So I came back fast because I, I, I put my determination and my focus. I focused that I want to come back strong. So I focus on it, forget about everything. And then I do it. But how was you, how were you dealing with those months or the, after the injury? Because your career was finished in that instant. Uh, you needed yeah, yeah. to recover. Uh, how you yeah. like I said, anything, everything happened in a second, you know, in life, everything happened for a, in a second. But I was thinking about it at first. I said, please, I want to come back. You know, I need, I need this contract at first. But nothing happened. It didn't change. So after the month, I, I emailed the, the coaches, made me, we talked about it. He said, okay, I understand you. I wish you were, you were here, you signed with us. I said, it's fine. They have some another player. I said, that is um, that is on, um, it's on time. So I went back home to Africa, take care of myself. And the funniest thing was, there was a game coming up for the national team. What a, who was going to play against Egypt in September. So I went there like in... March, I was there in March, so took care of my feet. Started running. I started walking first. I started walking, you know, and then started jogging at the beach. I, I, I walk in the beach, the beach a lot. I stay home. I don't go out. I don't invite anybody in my house, you know, to come talk about soccer or encourage. I don't want nobody to encourage me. I say, please, I know your heart. I don't want those. I don't want to be people to be feel sorry, feel sorry for me, you know. I, I'm a strong man, so. I work on myself. People see me in the street, they say, hey, Suma is in town. He's still in town. So they didn't come in for the national team. But I, I, I went there to support them, you know. I went there to support them, give them advice. Until the coach asked me, Suma, do you want to, you know, show these guys, you know, what a left winger can do? Because we need speed in the attack. So that, he asked me. The, because you were injured, right? And yeah, many exactly. months, and then you went back to your country to recover faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you went to the training of your national team. Yes, because without playing, yeah, they didn't, without playing for ten months. Without playing for ten months, so the coach asked me, "Can you do it? Can you just show the guys?" Because my it's my right, right leg, so I said, oh, "Okay, I can." I see my left. I can play with my left. It's, I play with my. Left, I'm a left footer, so I said, "Okay, I will show them." So I packed with them one day. Do some skills, you know, scored, and then the, the, the whole stadium, you like, uh oh, no, no. Suma, Suma have to play, you know. He have to play, you know. No, it doesn't matter how, but he will play. So he started going to the news, you know, they talk about it. I don't, I, don't, I don't listen to the news. I don't listen to those things. I'm not a fan of it. So I'm home, sitting down, you know, having my own good time, you know. Have my, my, my best friend came over, we talk, have some drinks. We we'll laugh about it. We didn't talk about. I told him no, no football. Don't talk about no football. Let's talk about different things, you know. So he asked me, "When are you going back, man? When are you coming back to Sweden?" I said, "I will come back. You know, and I feel good now. I have to go back to play." I was thinking about to coming back to finish to continue my career and everything. And then at the three days before the game, I have a call from the the coach to come to the to the camp. You know, we need you around. You know, also give advice to these young players. I said, okay, that's fine. That's that's good. As, as long as it's football, I can be around. Went there and then started talking to them. The next moment I know, the, the Friday night, he said, Suma, I want, we want you to stay in the, in the hotel. I said, I have to go home. He said, no, stay. <laughs> so I stayed. The morning, they came to my room. They talked to me, said, well, we have decided that you, you start this game. I was, I was what? I, I'm, I'm going to play? He said, yeah, because we have somebody who have the strength, you know, if, if they play 20 minutes, just give 20 minutes and then they come out. And we, we were playing against um, Egypt, we played against Egypt, yeah, Egypt against yeah, Mo, Mo Salah. That was when? In so, 2016, because, 2017? No, it was, um, no, that was a long time ago, 2000. 
10 or 12, I think, 2012 or 13. I, I don't I'll kind of, I'll have to check it out, I think so, about those times. So we played against them. At first, I was scared, you know. I said, what happened if, what, what should happen if something happened? Like, I turned my ankle again, and then and I was scared. But I didn't feel any pain, you know. I was, I was like, yeah, I'm in the game. So I started running, you know, do my things again. 60 minutes in the game, I scored. I scored, and I think I, I, I have the picture somewhere. I saw the picture yesterday. Somebody sent it to me. I saw it yesterday, actually. You know, because the, the actually, actually, actually the, 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 the lady was asking me, why were you crying, you know, in this picture? Why why were you crying? I was like, it's, you don't, you won't understand, but it's something very important to me that, that game. I said, okay, okay, all right, I understand you. It was nice, too. So we won the game 2-1. I played in for all 90 minutes. I didn't feel no pain. It was it was really good. And you said that you were After, really, you, you you were really good in covering uh, Mo Salah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some pictures. I have some pictures with I have some pictures with him. After in, in the games, I was there all the time. You know, he's really quick. He's really really fast. You know, so because of his fastness, so he could stay Suma. Stay with him. That guy is fast. That kid is really fast. So I have to, I focus more to, to cover than to attack. You know, when I attack, I have to really come back really fast to cover him because he don't go back. He don't come back all the way. He's not that, he's not that, he's not his strength to come cover. But his strength is to attack. So I said, okay, I remember what my coach told me, your strength is running. So forget about it, but just keep running. So that's why I use, I, I keep my, my strength, run with him all through the game. Cool. That was, and then at the end we had fun. We won. Amazing story. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. It was good, yeah. yeah. Um, can you please uh, explain something about the the role? Uh, because it's a team sport, uh, football. But uh, the role yeah. of a captain. You were you were a captain in many teams. I I think. And how, how was the role of being an individual who can lead uh, the leadership and the energy that you bring in uh, in the team in the, in the, before the match and in the match that you lift them up? How did you manage to do that or some of your experiences? Well, um, as I told you, um, outside of football, you never see me talk a lot about football. After, when, it comes, when I don't play football, I don't argue with the fans, I don't talk to fans about football. Okay. You know, when yeah, when I'm in the field, like like if I if I'm somewhere like talking to people, for me, what I what I know about myself, I can read the whole game in like in next in five minutes time. I, I know everything that's going on. I will know. You know, so since I played, I left attacking back, so I always said the, the players, you know, this is how we should play. You know, then they listen to me very well. Say, so, yeah, let's listen to what he's saying because I already see what they're gonna do. If they're gonna play from the sides, they're gonna play from the mid midfield, or they're gonna play long ball, I always control them because some players they always they sleep, so you have to wake them up. So I will shout beyond my voice. You will, even if you are outside, you hear my voice outside. I'm shouting. If you mess up, the, if you mess up in the midfield, I will come at your back with, I reach your back. Wake up, you now wake up. It's time to wake up, you know. After the game, they will tell me, so I mean, you'll be hitting me. I don't know. I say, yeah. You don't want me to hit you from the back. Just know I'm coming for you. Yeah, I'm really serious. Well, I, I'm really serious. And then I talk to them, you know. Um, to be captain for the national team. It's, and then some club in the club, my club teams too. And I, I bring, I bring my, my, my vibes in, in, into into the old team in, in that room, you know. Sometimes people are too quiet, they're like, ah, I'm focusing on the game, you know. Some people want to meditate. No, no, this is not the time to meditate. The time to meditate was four hours ago. This is the time to, you know, relax yourself, you know, just relax. So have fun. Don't focus on the game. Don't focus on the game right now. Yeah, in, in the dressing room, you know, relax, you know. Basketball, do this. I'm gonna, I'll do this. You know, just talk, just have fun. But when you go in the field, everything will come naturally. In soccer, everything comes naturally. You don't. It's not something that you force. It comes naturally to you. 
and to be a leader is like being a, like a, your, your dad to your parents, uh, to your kids, you know. When you're, when you're a father to your, your kids, you know, you tell them things that will make them, you uplift them, you know, you don't put them down. I don't see any, any parent put their kids down. You have to uplift your kids, you know, talk to them, give them the positive ways, you know. That's why, that's why I, I used to do, you know, tell them, you know, guys, to win this game, you have to run more than them. You have to have fun. Don't be afraid of anything. If you miss the ball, it's not at the end of the game. Come back and get it back. The moment you give up, that, but that moment, that second you give up, it's, it's, it's probably for the team. So you lose it, you get it back. You lose it, you go get it back. It's like, for me, soccer is like my girlfriend. If I lose it to another man, yeah, you'd be jealous. You know, you don't want you don't want to lose your, somebody you love to somebody else. You get jealous, you get frustrated, you want them back. So just imagine those things. So you don't want to lose the ball. That's one. And if you lose it, go get it back. If that's something that you really want, go and get it back. So that's I would tell them, you know, in a in a good way so that they will know, yeah, that that's that makes sense. Yes. Thank you for that explanation. And uh, please uh, add with, because you've touched now one very specific point. A good person, a genuine person, authentic, uh, like you are, um, and a successful one is a person who knows his own skills, strengths, and is very able and capable to show them. So you were not thinking, I shouldn't hit him on the back. You were not thinking, I shouldn't shout. You did it. You went for it. You put it out. You expressed it. You put away all yes, the emotions. So can you yeah. elaborate something more on this genuine athlete, uh, authentic, how you met some people, or you met a lot of players? Uh, how is your thinking about this? Like showing yeah, the yeah. good thing out, not being afraid to show who you are. Yeah, like um, when we three years ago, when we won, when we won the this, the league here, you know this this they have a very, we have we a very young team, you know, young young kids, young players, you know. So when I first came to the field, you know, practice with them, you know, they were joking around a lot, you know, they joke in the field of playing, they would joke. So it, it, I don't feel good about it. So I, I talked to the manager. I said, these kids they don't understand what is soccer. They don't know, they don't know what is football, right? Football is not come here. And, you know, in the field, dance, you know, after that, have, have your phone, take pictures. I said, we'll lose by that. you lose games. So one day he told me, he said, listen, he said, me, I'm the manager. You are the captain. So this is your team. It's my team, but I give you your, the permission to, this is your team. Take care of your, this team. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. I said, okay. And you said, yes. So, <laughs> so we were playing a friendly game, you know. So we, some players were walking, you know, want to lose the ball. So when one player lose the ball, so after one only we are past him to go back to go get the ball. After the game, I went to him, I hold him like this. I said, Mister, I shake him. I say, hey, if I run past you again, I'll kick you in the field. He said, oh, okay, all right, sorry, sorry, all right. So whenever we lose the ball, he will run, he will be looking around where if I'm coming for him, he will be looking behind his shoulder if I'm coming. So because I'm coming with, with speed to cover. So if he's there, he will cover for me. See, that's how you play soccer. So we, I give him that energy, you know, we are, we are focused, you know, we have fun when it's fun time, we have good time. And in practice, it's competition. Everybody wants to play in the first level. I told the coach, if you don't train good, don't put him in the field. Trust me, coach. If they are not good in practice, don't put him in the game. And you listen to me. Some players are not, they don't want to take it good in practice. They take them out. And won the league. And even in the final, the final, they didn't play. I didn't play the game. I had a, 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 a problem with my head. I was in the hospitals, but I watched the game. Um, I watched the game live. So the coach called me. I say, he said, this game is for you. You know, everybody, all the players, they call me, Suman, this game, I know you are here. You are here with us. This game is for you. So I was there. I say, I know, I know. So all the game, I was not, I was in the hospital. I was like, oh, I feel pain in my heart, you know, because I want to be there. 
after the game was going, I, I turned it off. I, I couldn't watch. I, I can't. I can't watch. My heart, my heart will not permit me to watch those kind of things. I turn it off. I say, if they win, they win. It's football. If they lose, they lose. So I was there lying down. On 8, 8 p.m., I have a call. A video call. Like, yeah, yeah, we won. I said, what? <laughs> we won. They say, yeah, yeah. We, we, the coach say, yeah, Suma, we win this call for you. You know, you give this team lots of your energy and support. This cup is really for you. So I was happy for that. And then they came down. I went to see them. And we were happy. That what I, that what I love to see when we, when we win something that you know you put your energy on, onto it your 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 sweat your blood you put it in there you have a good result so so every player wants to play if you think it's it's like you imagine things like I'm gonna I'm gonna be like Messi Messi have his story it would, if he tell you his story you you will you change your your mentality about football. We only have story. All these big players have their stories. So if you want to be like them, it's really it's, it's now. If you want to be the best, you have to wake up early in the morning. When I was back, back home and I was playing for the under 17, it was not easy for me because I didn't have a spot because there was like 500 players. I didn't have a spot. So, but I didn't give up. You no, know? I was not in the first team. I was not in the second team. I was like in the fifth team. I was not even close. Early in the morning, somebody told me, Suma, you are good, you have skills, but you have to really have energy to play soccer. So the beach was my home. 6 a.m., I'm there. I will run back and forth, back and forth, go home, eat, and sleep. That's all I do. So when they, when they make the selection for the under-17, I was there. I didn't even believe I was going to call me for the, the 20 players, players, so, but they called me. Hard work. I really, I really work my body. I really, really work my body. So nobody will tell me about training hard or training soft because I always go 100 percent in training and in games. It's 100 percent. It's nothing. Um, I think easy today. Tomorrow I'll come back. No, no, no. Every week, Monday to Saturday is the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Good. You, you have amazing stories and you mentioned now a couple of times energy. So energy, as I see it, is determination and an inner will and having the positive and the very strong mindset and mentality. Um, yeah. How did you manage to regenerate? Because you already had a boy, uh, a son, uh, you had family, you were playing, you were the captain, you were traveling. You lose a lot of energy, like life's vital energy, with everything. How did you regenerate? One thing you mentioned, you, you shut off the phone before the game, the TV, you were focused. What else did you do to regain energy back? Yeah, when I, yeah, when I started traveling, you know, traveling back and forth, you know, I, I didn't lose them, but this is my family. But I, the number one thing was my career. That's why I took first. So my career came first. Even though family came first, but I took my, my, my career very serious. I would talk to them, you know, sometimes, call them. Even though I, I don't see that or be there with them, it's, I don't I see my kids for maybe a long time. I don't spend time with them. No Christmas, no holidays, no bad day, no bad. I'm not there. I would send them things or call them. But that's not enough, you know. It's like some of those energy were, you know, leaving me. But I have to really focus on on my career at that time. But then as as I go older and get more experience in soccer and then how to balance, make me have to make a balance. And I start, you know, thinking about them. You know, I spend more time with my son, teach him how to play, you know, who kick and you score and then do push up. You watch me, you watch my, my video all the time on YouTube. Every day, you watch my, my video on YouTube. So when I call him, he asks me, Daddy, you play soccer? I say, uh, No, not today. He said, ah, Why don't you play soccer? I said, Okay, I'm going to play soccer. He said, Come, let's go play soccer. <laughs> so it makes me really happy, you know. Somebody growing up just want to be like you, you know. So they gave me joy to see him grow like that. Good. You mentioned now joy, 
and we can connect this in your last uh, for like last question for you please explain your vision because you've mentioned the joy the family where you get back and uh, last time you explained how you want to invest and help a lot of young players in your country with academy with education with football because you've came out of there you've succeeded and now you want to give back a lot and that brings you a lot of joy and compassion and you are a very high, kind per hearted person please if you can explain your uh, vision yeah 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 as um it's i know i grew up back home because no support no nobody helped me to be here today where i'm at i know it's by true god grace and my my hard work that's why i'm here so the things I've learned a lot over the years, I've seen how this football is growing and getting bigger. So going back home, see the joy, you know, the joy those, those fans have, the love they have for the game. But there's something like I, can, I see there's some lacks that, that we don't have, those kids don't have. So I know how I grew up, so I w don't want generation kids, you know, that are growing up to grow up and then become a man that and they, they are, they are, they are future, they are, the love that they have for this game die in them and they do something that they don't want to do. So I've seen, I've seen a lot of my friends who, who, who are better than me. When I go back home, they are not doing anything. So it hurts my feelings so much. So giving back to those kids is like, it's going to be like Christmas present for them because all they do is play soccer and come and eat. That's all. Play soccer and then go home. So I want to go back home, help those kids, you know, to achieve their dreams. Back when they are home, so I don't want them to come to Europe or Asia or America and then find anything difficult because I want to share my, my experience that I have over the years in this part of the world take it back there to make them learn a lot and make them see the game as different as it is. You know, make they don't, don't kill themselves in, in in anger or I, I don't have this, I don't have soccer shoes, you know, I don't have something to eat after the practice, you know, I don't have transportation to go somewhere. You know, I just wanna go down there, have them, you know, what take them out, travel with them to different places, play football, come back and then enjoy it. That's uh, very inspirational, and I think that that is a purpose and mission of our lives, that we break through our own limitations, we build ourselves up, uh, activate potential, and then we give back. Uh, that's the true yeah, purpose. Back. Yeah, as we have to give back. That's it. The best thing, the most good thing that I think to do in, in life is when you give back. It's not when you take, you take, 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 you don't give, then God will take it from you. So what I've learned, I have a lot in my head if, because I cannot sit down here and talk about God a lot in his head. So I have a book that I, I write things down. No, I'm not um, that good on that to write things down. What, is, what I learned, I write it down. No, it's in my head. I know when I sit down, I explain to you it will it, 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 work. If I tell you things, it will, it will listen, you, it will work for you. Because I know, I've seen, I can see, I can see. Very so every night, every day, it's always in my mind. That's my dream. That's my dream. That's my calling to be part of this world. Very good. And the world and the God supports you in that endeavor and adventure so that the children in Sierra Leone will have uh, a capacity and ability and opportunity, possibilities open to thank live you. as well activate. Thank you yeah, very thank you. much. Thank you very much, Sheriff Sumo, for being such a genuine person, very kind hearted. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And all the best in your all adventures, endeavors that you succeed and that children get uh, what you can provide them with. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice talking to you too. Thanks. Great. All right. All right. Thank you for tuning in. 
Follow me on being the genuine athlete Instagram and Facebook page. Share, like and comment and be genuine all the way. <laughs> I know. I have to go back to sleep. Yep, it's it's Sunday. Sunday is, is lazy day. <laughs> <laughs>